In this demonstration, I'm going to talk about uh, running flex color on your computer without an Imacon scanner uh, attached to it. And the reason we're going to do this is if you are making a raw triple F scan in flex color, uh, you're going to need a piece of software to open uh, that file up. Uh, the Hasselblad triple F file format is incompatible with uh, the Adobe software because of a whole host of reasons, probably including that they all want to make money. Um, and so if we were to sort of take this triple F file, which is a raw Imacon scan off of a um, X1, X5, or Imacon scanner, we would not be able to open it up. So instead of just changing this to .tif and then sort of going through Photoshop and inverting it, I'm actually going to use the software uh, Flex Color to open this thing up. And so the first thing I need to do is I actually need to go to the Hasselblad website. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to Hasselblad. Um, I'm going to go to menu and I'm going to go to uh, my Hasselblad. Um, here you will be asked to create an account. And so you're going to need to go ahead and create an account, but it's going to sort of allow you free access to all of the firmware and software. So what I'm going to do is then go to my downloads. I'm going to select the product that I own or that uh, I've been using. And I will then sort of download FlexColor for the Mac or the PC, depending on which operating system I have. Once I've installed the software correctly and I know where uh, my Imacon scans are, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch FlexColor. I went ahead and put it in the dock because it's something that I'm going to be using a lot. And what's going to happen is the uh, Imacon interface is going to come right up and look exactly like it would uh, if we were trying to uh, have a scanner attached. So, uh, you know, this one is going to set up in the uh, capture mode for having a digital camera tethered to it. Um, and so what I need to do is I actually need to find where my triple F files uh, are going to be at. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Window and I'm going to open up the Thumbnails browser. And in the Thumbnails browser, it's going to give me a, a option to sort of use the default scratch pad, um, maybe a recent, the one that I've navigated to because I've messed this demo up a couple times and I've had to re-record this. Um, I can then go to Choose Location and then it will allow me to navigate to wherever uh, those triple F file folders uh, are. I can also change the small, medium, uh, large preview size. I can also, if I click onto this, I can give it a green, yellow, or red rating. So depending on however I'm sort of uh, organizing these things. And then if I want to get it from the... thumbnails window into uh, the flex color software what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click it open and at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of act like the scanner is attached right um, if you've ever scanned to TIFF on a Imacon scanner uh, I'm going to sort of act as if that's what's happening I'm going to go ahead and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my marquee uh, go in a little bit I'm going to sort of take my histogram information, um, and if I don't have that up, I'm going to click in the corrections tab. Um, I'm going to sort of pull uh, my shadows and my highlight sliders uh, to the edges of these histograms. Like you write, you can see me sort of adjusting the color here. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm not trying to like perfectly color correct. Um, I want to do that in Photoshop. I'm trying to capture as much scanned information as possible. So maybe these little tails right here, I'm going to include those. Um, and at this point, I'm maybe not going to mess with uh, the midtone slider too much. Um, I'm going to maybe keep that as is and do all of those corrections in Photoshop. Um, now I'm going to come back uh, to some of these other corrections. I just want to show you there is a uh, gradation with a curve in here, and so I can sort of do a curve. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually like reset this curve here. Um, it doesn't really matter because I have the power button turned off. Um, if I turned this power button on, it would affect 
what that would look like. Um, I just want to show you how these things work. This is the auto function, so this will perform an auto correction. Uh, you can try it and see what it looks like. Uh, you know, personally, the auto correction is not what I'm going to use. I'm going to sort of just scan uh, by the numbers. And again, I'd rather have a little bit more information um, that I can sort of uh, deal with in Photoshop because, again, Photoshop's going to allow me to save things a little bit more. Now, once I have that all set, I'm going to go to File Setup and I'm just going to make sure that I'm optimized for true resolution. I'm on a 16-bit mode. My frame is not going to matter because I've already done that. I'm going to go into my color corrections and I'm going to uncheck uh, any application of color correction and then make sure that I'm uh, exporting at a Adobe RGB 1998 color space. All right. Um, I can then drop my resolution to the highest resolution. Uh, now an RGB 16-bit scan at 3000 DPI will yield a 389 megabyte image. I will now go ahead and remarquee this image outside of the image area into the white. Um, I will go ahead and use Photoshop to do my cropping because again, it's gonna be a little more precise. And as you can see, uh, this scan is not set into the scanner at uh, perfectly 90 degrees. Uh, once I do that, all I have to do is hit save. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this scan right next to the triple F file folder, file um, in my year month uh, day folder. Um, and then again, I'm going to always do a TIFF and not a JPEG. So I'm going to go ahead and save that out. And it's going to go ahead and process. Uh, in the next video, we're going to run through uh, opening this up in Photoshop and going from there.